Timus Arena Lager. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I've got one here today from Romania and I think this is probably going to be the first beer I've ever had from Romania and it's the Timosorina, I think that's how it's pronounced and it's from the Ursus Brewery which in turn is owned by Asahi. It was only today that I found out Asahi actually owned Pilsner Urkel. I didn't know that, I thought they were independent. but. Apparently not, which is a shame. Beer's still good, don't get me wrong, but I didn't know that. Pilsner Roquel, of course, is legendary among lagers. Every light-coloured lager you see nowadays is derived from that. I can trace its lineage back to that because that was what inspired light-coloured beer. Anyway, we've got another light-coloured beer today, and that is this stuff. <clears throat> this is the Timus Arena stuff. I found it in the shop across the road the new shop that's just opened, the Premier Supermarket, and they've got quite a few foreign beers in there. And I really didn't have much luck with any of them, really. There was one, uh, an unfiltered Keller beer that I recently reviewed, it's up on the channel. That was about the best one out of the lot, but they weren't great, to be, to be honest. They were mostly, mostly from Latvia, Lithuania, and I think there was an Estonian beer as well. But yeah, not very good. And this stuff is, or it was, one of them that was sitting on the shelf. And it's, it's, I think, one of the most popular beers in Romania. Now, the brewery, the original brewery that this stuff came from, ha goes back. And it says on here, it says uh, since 17, I don't know what that means, D Din? I can't speak Romanian, but Din, I would imagine means since in Romanian and that's 1718. Now it's quite interesting that brewery was founded by someone called uh, Prince Eugene of Savoy and he was a at the time he was probably one of the most successful generals of in Europe certainly him and uh, the Duke of Marlborough they fought in the Spanish War of Succession and that Prince Eugene of Savoy he was I think he was in the the army of the Holy Roman Emperor or the M Holy Roman Empire, and the Austro, was it, it wouldn't be the Austro-Hungarian, I think it might be in the Habsburg house or something like that, but he was a very, very successful general, and I think he was a politician as well, but he was paid a lot of money for his successes. I mean, he beat the Ottoman Turks uh, during the siege of Vienna, and that instantly made him famous, and he earned a lot of money, and in Romania, there was a region called Tir Timisor, I think that's how it's pronounced, but the, the water wasn't drinkable, so they decided to brew beer instead. He paid for that, and that was in 1718. I think that was when he'd retired, or near when he'd retired. But yeah, and that's where it can tr trace its, its history back to. But it's been taken over by this Ursus lot, and they in turn have been taken over by Asahi. And I found out today Asahi own Grolsch, because this Ursus people, they they own quite a few brands. They own the St. Stephanus brand, which do Belgian beer, Belgian Abbey beer, really not good, not impressed with it at all. They also do the Peroni, they own that, and they own the Pilsner Elkel, as I just mentioned, and they also own Grolsch. Remember that stuff, Grolsch? It was crap, basically. And I looked on their website, and it, I was trying to get some information on this, and it's just fucking marketing bullshit. I wish brewers would put 
what the beer is about and what they've used to brew it and a little bit of the history, but they don't. It's just pure marketing fucking crap. I can't, that's how memorable it was. I can't even remember what that was that they wrote about that. But the Grolsch, I do remember what they wrote about that. They said, it's just one, one sentence. Grolsch encourages creative thinking. And I think I know why it does, because when you're drinking it, you're thinking, I could fucking do better than this. So there you go. It's shit beer, Grosh. I'm not even going to review it on the channel. I can't even get hold of it now, but if I did, I would probably just cut out the middleman and just pour it straight down the fucking sink because it was crap then and it's crap now, I would imagine. I'm not even going to drink it. I wouldn't even bother. If it was free, sat in my back garden, I'd draw the curtains. Anyway, let's get on to this beer. Right, not as I say, not a lot of information I can come up with from this, but I'm assuming it's going to be a macro brewed beer. If it's available over here in a, in a premier supermarket, I'm imagining they brew it on quite a big scale. It's 5%, it's a 500ml can, and that's what it looks like. It's come out of the fridge, it's nice and cold, and I can't give you anything about the brew sheet. I can't speak Romanian. There's a lot of stuff on here that's in Romanian. Uh, yeah, beer blonde pasteurizata. <laughs> Producer de Ursus. Yeah, they saying that there's some connection in South Africa with this lot. I don't know what it is. Maybe they're South African. They were owned by Saab Miller at one point, and Saab Miller got taken over by AB InBev, and I don't know what happened. That well, AB InBev bought a lot of their their breweries, and the ones that didn't, I think, were sold off and so a so he must have got there i think they took this lot up in 2017. anyway enough about that let's just get on to the beer let's get out of the glass really haven't got much hope for this beer on the websites they the tourist boards say oh Rom Romanian beer is really good. Well, that's as may be, but I'm not gonna judge Romania on one beer that I'm having, but it does it does smell sweet and grainy. I'm wondering if they put glucose syrup into this. It smells really sweet. I'm gonna let it calm down for a little bit. Lots and lots of carbonation in that. And I do mean a lot. That's not a nucleated glass. And that is fucking going for it. The head is dissipating. One of the things they said is that the head is long lasting. Well, that is not going to last long, I don't think. What are we getting on the nose? Yeah, sweet and grainy and there's like a little bit of a sulfurous aroma to it. Now that could be just the, the carbon dioxide in it that's just pushing that up, but yeah, it don't smell great, but proof is in the tasting. So let's shut up and let's taste it. <laughs> Bottoms up, wish me luck. Oh, what a fucking metallic taste that's got. Oh, that's really noticeable. That was really, that was the most dominant flavour. That was the most dominant flavour on that first mouthful, was metallic. Definitely grainy though, I can get a slight touch of sort of roasted malt or biscuit malt on there. Let's have a have another dive in. It's still got that <coughs> little bit of a metallic taste to it. Carbonation's a bit abrasive. But there's a weird taste to it. And I don't know what it is. I don't know. 
whether it's some kind of additive. Did I put the ingredients on this? No, they haven't even put... I, I wish the fucking EU or whoever it is would insist that everything is listed. Ingredients, malt. It looks like, what is it? Malt apper, I'm imagining it's water. Malt. Din ores. I thought this, what does it say? Purum, it looks like fucking Pornhub. P-O-R-U-M-B. That's my eyes, that is. It doesn't really say Pornhub, <laughs> but it looked like it from a distance. And hammy, I have no idea what, hammy. Better not be fucking bacon in this beer. I don't know what it means. If there's sugar in it, how many, how many ingredients are there? One, two, three, four, four. Yeah, that's all they have to do. Just put them four ingredients. I don't list all the other shit they're putting in here. This ain't great, to be honest. There's a weird aftertaste on it. It's like stale biscuits. When's the fucking sell by date on this shit? October 21. It ain't gone off. Well, I assume it ain't gone off. There's a very herbal and grassy aroma coming from it now. And sulphur. There is a lot of sulphur that I'm getting on this. It's like a like an astringent type sulphur, if you can imagine that. I just can't get past that metallic taste. It's just ruined it for me. It it does seem like there's some reasonably nice flavoured malt in that, but there's this 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 seam of metallic that runs through it all, and it's just really putting me off. Nah, nah, I, I'm not really, not really fussed about this. I can see a reasonable tasting beer in this, but it's just being, it's just being hidden by that metallic scene that's through it, gone through it. And that carbonation is quite abrasive too, but. On the whole, I'm not too impressed with this. I have tasted worse, I will say that, but this is not great at all. Sorry, it's not doing it for me. It's a shame because there is some reasonably nice tasting malt in that and the the sulfurous aroma doesn't really translate it to the beer there's some herbal or grass i'd say grassy more than herbal in there as well but there's that just that metallic it tastes almost like not copper it's not like putting a penny in your mouth it's like it could also almost come come have come from the tin i'm not sure what the tin technology is in romania but that's what it's reminding me of. It actually tastes of tin, like silver, if you can imagine that, putting 5p in your mouth or something like that. That's what I'm getting. It's subtle, but it's there, and it, it's just ruining it for me. I can't get past that. Shame. So what's the verdict on this Timosarina lager from Romania? Uh, nah, not doing it for me. I think there is a an okay beer behind that metallic seam, but I can only go on what I've been given, and I can't get past that metallic seam, which is a shame, 
because that could have been reasonable, I'd say. I wouldn't say great, but not the worst lager I've tasted. Not as bad as some of the other Eastern European stuff that I've tried from the Lithuanias and the Estonias and whatnot. But uh, it's, it's just... It's just got that metallic seam and I can't get past it. So I'm going to give that a four out of 10. Now, I'm not sure whether that's a bad batch, whether they've all got that metallic taste on them, but it, it's just putting me off. So I think four out of 10 is, I'm being probably being generous there. I should, yeah, I'll, I'm going to give it a three out of 10. And I'm not really going to recommend it because if you're in a, a premier supermarket, there is better beer. They do better beer in there. Obviously, if you can get a can of, or a bottle of Budvar, that's going to be infinitely better than this stuff. And this was, I think, over two pound a can. And it definitely isn't worth that. That's just, oh, it, it, it's just got that horrible metallic taste to it. But it's a shame. If it didn't have that, it would be, at best, very, very average. But now it's not really doing it for me. I'm probably gonna chuck that down the sink. I've got a few Paolanas in the fridge. I'll, I'll drink that instead. But yeah, I think three out of 10 is a fair mark. Three is what it's gonna get, and I'm not gonna recommend it. So there you go. And remember, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>